actual enemies to lovers where they're like gonna kill each other at first, LMAO. So the best kind of enemies to lovers. I don't know I've chosen today of all days to show up looking like this oh my God. But Anyway, it's been a while since I've done a hyper specific book recommendation video and you guys love them So I went on my Instagram. Go follow me on Instagram. Oh my God, this is such a long time ago I need to go on my archive and I asked you guys to give me hyper specific book tropes that you wanted recommendations for I'll get through as many as I can if anyone's gonna be pressed about me repeating book recommendations from other videos Then this is not This is not the place for you. I'm gonna try to use my little head in my life that I am book smart but like not the best like street smart about like the most common sense type of things if you guys want a free and easy and cute aesthetic way of learning that kind of stuff making it fun with little games then you guys would love the sponsor of this video so thank you so much for sponsoring brilliant.org if you don't know brilliant is the best way to interactively learn about math science computer science freaking data science probability all that stuff I was not someone who like loved math however there's a browse through the courses there there are some really cool ones like about decision making I'm doing one right now about like physics in like everyday life when I tell you I was shocked at how dumb I was I simply did not know all these like, common knowledge science But I'm a little less dumb now thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics I was on the basic side. Okay, no shame. I was on the basic side new lessons are added every single month Whatever your skill level is brilliant is a really good way to like customize the experience of what will best benefit you So the course that I worked on recently is a scientific thinking one But the one that I'm doing is called nature is a puzzle. I'll show it on the screen if you guys are interested in checking out brilliant get started for free free for free for 30 days and get 20% off an annual plan if you visit brilliant.org slash sunny kim i'll have it linked in the description too so make sure you check it out the first 200 people to click that link in the description will get 20% off brilliant's annual premium subscription thank you again to brilliant for sponsoring now time for the book recommendations okay, i'm gonna actually try to get through as many as i can so i won't elaborate too much on like what the book is about but just like the part that's like relevant to the book trope you guys are asking for so we can get through as many as possible i'll try to think of as many as i can for for each recommendation too if there's like multiple because i'm a giver you know okay so the first one books with letters or text oh my gosh there's so many i'm literally gonna try to like think of all of the ones that i can't think of and again sorry if i repeat multiple books but not sorry enough to not repeat them so the first one that i think of right away is divine rivals by rebecca ross that one is letters between two people sent through a magical typewriter one of them knows who the person is one of them doesn't know and they're like enemies the other one that i can think of letters to the lost one of my favorite books of all time Again, letters anonymous on both sides Like, neither of them know that they're actually writing to that person They know each other in real life, but they don't like each other They go to the same high school And again, falling in love Um, um, All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover has letters in it Not anonymous letters, it's just a letter to one person Oh, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston That is like text Enemies to lovers Forced into a friendship together Son of the President The Prince of England From England to the US They're kind of sending texts to each other Magnolia Parks by Jess Hastings is texting But it's not like the main form communication it just has text in it or oh, yours truly by abby jimenez that one has a lot of letters that's kind of how they first struck up the friendship because the guy has anxiety he kind of has just like a bad first impression with the girl he ends up writing a letter to her apologizing she ends up writing back and then they end up falling in love this is also just like one of the best romance books i think i've ever read oh this is how you lose a time war again letters it's a really really short book it's about two spies well their code names are red and blue they leave letters to each other throughout time romantic pining yearning if you want something like that also really quick Quick and sapphic. I mean, I'm sure there's more, but that's all I'll say for now. Everyone knows two people like each other except those two. I really love this trope that everyone can see it except them. Definitely because I secretly, not so secretly, because I'm putting it out on the internet, want this trope to happen to me. So if anyone's offering, I'm here. The book that I'm reading right now, which is Beach Read by Emily Henry. That one is definitely like that. I have it here. It's on my Kindle. This one is about two authors. They are kind of enemies to lovers, had a history. Also, When in Rome by Sarah Adams. I did have this book, but this had this trope in it. A pop star having this like getaway into this small town. She ends up meeting, I think his name is Noah. He's like a pie maker. It's a small town, so everyone is like really nosy. And she has younger sisters. They talk about it. Found family of all teens working together to solve something. Um, what immediately comes to mine is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So like if you think of like Criminal Minds except it's like YA and there's like a love triangle. That's kind of the vibe. But yeah, there's a found family of all the kids who are there pretty much hired by like the CIA or whoever they're working for. They're all trying to solve this crime. Books with quotes that you post on Instagram photo dumps. You're so real for that bestie. Probably any poetry book. I love anything by Bianca Sparacino. The Strength in Our Scars and A Gentle Reminder. The Strength in Our Scars is one that I posted before. Almost like self-help. And then I also think anything by John Green. 
Green. I think I posted one from Turtles All the Way Down. There's so many good quotes. If you know John Green, you know that he writes like a dream. The book where the girl sits in his lap, A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Maas. I never talk about this series just because it's talked about so much. So I feel like I don't even need to be talking about it. Um, but this is the second book in the Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses series. But I'm sure there's so many other romance books that have the trope in it. I just haven't read it because it's like not my cup of tea. But you slurp that tea down, sister. It's not really a trope, but when Shakespeare is involved somehow, the one that I think of immediately is When We Were Villains by Emma Brio. One of the best books I've ever read. It's like a literary fiction. It takes place in like this acting academy and they specialize in like Shakespeare plays. So throughout the book, there's a lot of Shakespeare plays that are like put on. I think it's called the Conservatory. It's like so brutal that the senior class is just like six people. A lot of other stuff happens. It's dark academia. So you know that someone's about to get murdered. I loved the Shakespeare vibes in the book. I just love theater so much. I think that's why I loved it so much. Other Shakespeare ebooks I can think of are the Chloe Gong like secret Shanghai books because historical fantasies, but they are inspired by Shakespeare. Kind of like retelling of these violent delights. It's supposed to be a Romeo and Juliet retelling. It's like gang families. Roma and Juliet are the heirs. Um, and then I think her new book that's coming out, Immortal Longings, is also a retelling of a Shakespeare story, but I don't know what it is. Okay, next one is Slow Burn fantasy romance like Six of Crows, kind of slow. Um, For this one, I always say the Savage Song, Our Dark Duet duology. It's just a duology like Six of Crows and it takes the span of those two books for something to happen between the characters, which is very much like a Six of Crows kind of slow. So I always recommend that. I think it's like the closest that I've ever gotten to like re-experiencing a Kanej kind of romance. Even though it's like such a one of a kind, we'll never be the same, we'll never experience it again. But this is one that comes actually pretty close. Um, other one I can think of is The False Prince by Jennifer A. Nielsen. One of my favorite books of all time. Really sweet. So it's not like Kanej where it's like sad. I think this is like the book that I read in middle school that like set for me the bar of fell in love with fantasy romance subplot. A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I, I think she writes slow burns really good um, because they're really subtle. It takes the course of multiple books for those two to have anything happen between them. Um, and I think what all of them have in common is that there's a good companionship built from the beginning rather than going straight into the romantic attraction, which is how I prefer it. It's actual enemies to lovers where they're like gonna kill each other at first. LMAO. So the best kind of enemies lovers. I always see the same thing for this. Uh, the Cruel Prince, like the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black. That one I think is like the most murdery. Where I genuinely was starting to read the book and I was like, I don't want them to get together. It's not even bully, it's like terror, terrorization. It's like literally attempted murder. Uh, next one is Second Chance Romance Without Cheating. Okay, now this is gripping Carly Fortune by the throat and calling her out. I'm not the biggest fan of Second Chance Romance. However, Around This Life by Renee Carlino. She does have a boyfriend at the beginning. She breaks up with him before anything happens. She starts reading this book that's like a novel of her traumatic childhood in which only one other person would have been able to write about it which is her childhood friends to lovers another Renee Carlino before we were strangers friends to lovers in college um, and it ends up being a big miscommunication trope so it's not a cheating trope it's miscommunication if you hate miscommunication don't read this academic rivals but both are in love with each other and think the other hates them I think today tonight tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon I don't know if they themselves know that they're in love with the person um, but there's definitely something there um, also if you could see the sun by Anne Liang very clear in that one that the guy is like really in love with her the entire time and she has no idea like she thinks that he hates her I think there's a scene in that book where he literally is like do you really think I hate you and also like do you actually hate me and when she's like yeah he's like hurt and which of course I was eating that up someone said I just want to cry so hard I throw up oh my gosh there's literally so many books that I can recommend for this okay I'm gonna make a whole other video about this actually one that I'll say I'll say pack of the moon by Kristen Higgins that one I really cried in. oh my gosh it's like the same trope of like Oh my gosh, I can't even talk about it. It's about a husband whose wife had previously died of cancer. And so after her death, she left him like 12 letters for every month with like a task for him to do for that month after she's gone. It's brutal. It's brutal out here. This girl loses control because of magic or something and the boy has to bring her back. Honestly, somewhere in the Shadow Me series by Tihir Malfi, this probably happened. Of course, Infernal Devices. I think there was like a scene where like Tessa, she's like a shapeshifter, um, but she starts like freaking out because she ends up shapeshifting into a vampire and it's like so weird because vampires are technically dead. It makes her freak out a little bit and then Will, of course, brings her back. Or is it Will or Jeb? Oh my God, that's kind of jail. Enemies to lovers where they're forced to make an alliance to defeat a bigger threat. These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. That's literally exactly what happens. They were together and they broke up so they hate each other even more because of this like illness kind of that's like taking over they decide to work together to investigate the threat academia like clockwork angel atlas six vibes i literally think the best vibe that i've ever seen a discovery of witches by deborah harkness it has a tv adaptation so what i recommend is you can read the book if you want but if you don't and you just want vibes watch the tv show because the setting the costuming oh Teresa palmer and matthew good like oh my god they're so good i think she's a history 
person. Like, I think she's getting her PhD or something. Oh my gosh, it's so- and then she goes to like this big library. She, it's just the vibe. It's giving like a powder of rain in London. And then you go to a library, candle, dusty book, coats called like the wool coats with the buttons on them. That's a very dark academia. And or you're the lead in a Korean drama. It's like that flavor. Babel by Arf Kwong. It takes place in like old Oxford, like way back when. These group of people who are studying to be translators. Yeah, they're all POC, so they're horribly, you know, Racialized. But anyway, characters are doing something sus but are about to get caught so they kiss. Also known as Johnny and Dora episode from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, if you know, you know. Our Lady Fortune by Chloe Long, I'm pretty sure this happens in it. Our main characters, Rosalind and Orion, they're supposed to be spies. They're going undercover at this workplace, they're pretending to be together. I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. If anyone loves Brooklyn Nine-Nine, please be my best friend because no one else watches it. I love a good rooftop balcony scene in a fantasy or contemporary setting. Let me tell you, I will give you both. Okay, balcony scene in a fantasy, obviously it's gonna go to in her little device. It's a famous scene, Will and Tessa. Literally the best balcony scene I've ever read in my life. It takes place in like a ball, like they go to a ball. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Just believe me. Rooftop in a contemporary setting. The Foxhole Core. Not the first book. I think it starts in like book, second or third book. This is all for the game series. Uh, one of my favorite series of all time now. I know you're sick of me talking about it. I know. I know. I'm... I'm not sick of me talking about it. Anyway, Neil and Andrew, it's like slow burn. Their thing is that they will go out onto the balcony and... Talk. I need a romance that will make me kick my feet, blush, and giggle like I've never giggled before. Okay, I actually think it takes a lot for a book to get this kind of reaction out of me. So let me think. Let me try to look for the last book that I remember doing that with. Maybe Better Than The Movies by Lynn Painter. I think what made it so cute, the guy in it, Wes Bennett, um, he was just like so chivalrous. That is like what got me. I misunderstood male lead and or morally gray female lead. You know that I exclusively love morally gray men. Oh my gosh, Aedwan from the Witchland series. He's literally like the villain in like the first book, but then we follow his perspective in the second book and he gets a little slow burn romance kind of thing. Um, it was giving morally gray man and that's exactly my type. Secret slash hidden idea. Identity. I always recommend the same thing. Legend by Marie Lu. That's my favorite one. It's like enemies to lovers. It's a really old YA dystopia series, but it's literally one of my favorite books. Secret identity between um, a criminal, like the most wanted man in this country and then the government's best soldier they're literally both concealing their identities from each other so they both just think that they just found another like street rat and they help each other out the revelation about their actual identities to this day i've been chasing the high next we have love triangle between brothers constantina is asking the real question okay so my turn pretty benny han obviously inheritance games obviously i will consider infernal devices because they're basically brothers those are definitely my top oh my gosh because i eat this this is my favorite trope if you didn't know please psychoanalyze what that says about me but and then brother's best friend i made a whole video about this actually i think i know a best friend's brother if that's okay portrait of a thief i'm gonna recommend this instead because it's asian and i'm just spreading the asian agenda however i think there is also a little bit of a brother's best friend in two different romances because this book is kind of it's randomly saucy out of nowhere you wouldn't think so because it's about like a group of people who are trying to put on a heist but also all these hoes are in love with each other so that was like the best part for me he's so annoying said with a smile oh that's a good one um, okay, what comes to mind is Graceling by Kristen Cashmore, which I know no one's ever heard the word Graceling in like 10 years because this book series is so old. It came to my mind so easily available just um, in this world people are graced with things So there's like one thing that they really really excel at. We follow a girl who's a really talented fighter Anyway, she ends up meeting a prince from another kingdom. Very much that vibe of like he's really cute Sly, but he's also like very sweet. I don't think she really likes him at first, but then he like grows on her Found family, but specifically the kind with a parent and child kind of relationship. Oh my gosh, I love I love that so much. The Darkest Minds by Alexander Bracken. All these kids are on the run. Ruby, Liam, and Chubbs. That's his nickname, by the way. I'm not being mean. Zoo is the youngest one. She's like a child, and so they're kind of on the run, but they take turns like homeschooling her and things like that. Um, so it's definitely like parent-child type vibe. Also, Midnight City, one of my favorite like post-apocalyptic books ever. And we follow a bounty hunter, and she has a bounty on her head, so that's how they meet because he kind of captures her. Then they both find this spaceship wreck, and there's a little girl in it. She's just this little girl, but she's so powerful. Anyway, the two of them have to work together to protect her and bring her to a haven for a Will Heron. Coded character. Finally, someone asking the real questions. Um, definitely, I feel like The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. If you're a Will Herndale Conrad Fisher girl, you're gonna love Grayson Hawthorne. Closed off when he tends to her wounds, but it's actually hot. I don't know what your definition of actually hot is, but I think I'm just gonna talk about the best tending to the wound scene I've ever read in my life. It's obviously gonna be from Six of Crows, most iconic tending to the wound scene, and the only one that ever exists in my head. Nothing has ever topped that one for me. I don't really find things that are like very explicitly supposed to be very, very hot to be 
hot at all. It's too on the nose. Like I want to see subtext. So this one is one with a lot of subtext in it because the tension leading up to it was like so good. Like the build up. Literally the guy character has like an aversion to physical touch. So you can imagine how tense one who doesn't have a family meets slash marries one with a huge loving family. Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson is exactly like this. The guy, Jace, is the patriarch of like this crime family. Huge, huge crime family. And he has like nieces and nephews or like kids and they're so cute. And the girl, Kazi, is literally an orphan. She's like been on the streets as a thief since she was like six years old and has no family. And so she ends up almost like fake date him, kind of fake date, fake marry. Um, and then she goes and stays with that side of his family and then she sees like all that and it's it's really cute. Desperate, messy, gut-wrenching, soul-crunching love confession. I think the best one I've ever read is The Dark Artifices. I consider the series cut off after the first two books because what was that third book? Julian and Emma, they're like childhood friends lovers, but it's like the most forbidden love you'll ever read in your life. Like it's... Ooh. Girl, they got a storm coming. You know Cassandra Clare, like the way that she writes love stories, it's like so dramatic. The angst, the tension. It's really exactly how you described it. Gut wrenching, soul crunching. Girl, I was stressed. I was stressed. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Someone said found family of people from broken home. Fantasy vibes. I think of the Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chokshi. Again, it's like another heist type of thing. They all come from broken homes because they all have their own like tragic backstory that has brought them together. They're all POC. You know how that's like. You know the vibes. Marginalized, used and abused. When a singer sees the other person in the crowd and is mesmerized. Lovely War by Julie Berry, except she's a pianist. And it's like a World War One love story. Very much the vibe. And one of them is a soldier right before he has to depart for the war and it like follows them over the span of time. They're together but they have to keep it a secret from everyone. Rick and Daisy. I think their first book is Hot House Flower but it starts like right at the beginning they have to even keep their friendship a secret because there's a little bit of an age gap between them a lot of her troubles her issues with like sleeping and mental health and ptsd and stuff Rick is the only one who like knows about it and like he's the one who helps her companionship vibes and then it turns romantic and then when they find out like i love that scene so much the romance that like, gives better than the movie's butterflies read excuse me while i ugly cry it gives me the same vibes with like the girl is into another guy and then the guy main character knows that and is trying to help her but he is actually falling for her she is falling for him but she doesn't know it but he has to just like watch her and he's also really kind and chivalrous and like that gives you butterflies like I said this one takes place between two black main characters instead of two white main characters okay, someone said a lesbian friends to lovers to enemies book okay I don't remember if it's actually friends to lovers to enemies in that order I think it's like friends to maybe it is like that actually but her name in the sky two girls in this small very religious town they start like discovering their feelings for each other puts a rift in their friendship but yeah it's sapphic so if you want to read something like that like, someone said falling in love with a ghost the new series by Cassandra Clare the chain of Oh my god, I forget like what the book one of the kids, but she falls in love with a ghost. My battery's gonna die. Okay, I think my battery dying was a signal for me to end really going forever because I don't even think I got through halfway of like all the things that you guys sent. But I did check on my phone and I think the count is 35. I just talked about 35 different tropes. So I feel like that's ample enough for one video. But if you guys want me to go through other ones that you guys sent, um, you guys can let me know and I can make another video like this. So that's gonna be all. Be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Follow me on my socials, they're all linked in the description. And I'll see you all in the next one. Good fortune, Toby.